Welcome to a new episode of The Doc is In. I'm Derek Keddington, a program manager in the Fatima bin Mubarak Center at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. As you recognize World Cancer Day, I'm excited to introduce you to our guest for today's episode, Dr. Fawad Khan. Dr. Fawad Khan is the medical director of our longevity medicine section in the Oncology Institute. I'm excited to talk to you today um, about the work you are doing. Um, I know the longevity medicine section is relatively new as it, as it is around today in our Oncology Institute. Um, and can you, can you please give us a brief overview of kind of what's under the umbrella of the Longevity Medicine Institute that's focused on our cancer patients? Thank you, Derek. Um, longevity Medicine section uh, in the Cancer Center at Fatma bin Pabarik Center uh, was launched in January 2024. This unique service to the region focuses on patients who have been identified at being high risk for cancers and ones who've had cancer, so are cancer survivors. And um, multiple specialty clinics under the longevity medicine section um, offer care to these patients. In the uh, longevity medicine section, we have the hereditary high risk clinic. This focuses on patients and population uh, who are at increased risk of developing cancers. The Cancer Survivorship Clinic offers care to patients who've had cancer. Uh, we introduce all diagnosed, newly diagnosed cancer patients to the service uh, soon after the diagnosis. Often they are uh, brought uh, to the clinic uh, at about six months after diagnosis. Mm-hmm once they've completed their active treatment. We have lifestyle clinic uh, where we have dedicated, uh, trained lifestyle physicians working on promoting healthy longevity. We have oncology nutrition, oncology physical therapist, oncology psychologist, and uh, natural healing clinics, along with the genetic counseling clinic all working together to promote uh, healthy longevity to our patients. Thank you. I love hearing about how comprehensive the service is. Um, and while we have so many great services to talk about, um, today's podcast, uh, we're going to focus on the, heredi- the hereditary high-risk clinic. Um, so can you tell us, you know, what, why was the hereditary high-risk clinic established and, and what's kind of your mission or your goal with that clinic? So we know cancer is uh, the second leading cause of death globally. And uh, cancer prevention has been identified as one of the key areas uh, by Department of Health and by Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi to focus on. Uh, The hereditary high-risk clinic focuses on population who have increased risk of developing cancers. Uh, These patients or population is identified through either having family history of certain cancers, mainly hereditary cancers, or if they have any abnormal gene or cancer mutations running either in the individuals or in the families. They're brought to the hereditary high-risk clinic for a detailed risk stratification. If identified at being increased risk of developing one of the cancers, they are placed on personalized precision prevention programs. Um, and, and this is all scientifically backed uh, with clinical guidelines. And we have a team of multidisciplinary experts who are qualified and trained in managing these complex patients. So really the mission in simple terms is to identify who is at high risk of developing cancer in the population, bring them to the prevention program, and reduce the cancer burden in the population. That's great. Um, One of the things you mentioned, I guess, was who's at high risk, whether that's through family history um, or through, you know, genetics and our our DNA makeup. Can you talk a little bit more about the genetic aspect? You know, how do we use genetic testing in in the hereditary risk program? And is it accessible in the UAE and in Abu Dhabi? The germline genetic testing has really revolutionized over the last five to 10 years uh, here in the UAE as well as globally. Uh, We have 
great access to germline genetic testing as well as somatic tumor testing. Um, we have access to the state-of-the-art bioinformatics facility at M42, who's our key partner in managing these patients. Germline genetic testing helps us to identify if there is a hereditary cause for uh, cancer. And um, it's helpful in doing a more precise risk stratification in our population. With the help of that genetic, uh, germline genetic testing, which is um, genetics, which we get from our parents. Um, with access to this information, we are able to do a more precise risk stratification and therefore, based on that, have a more personalized precision prevention program. To give an example, patients who are uh, at increased risk of breast cancer or ovarian cancer and test positive for one of the commonest um, germline genes, BRCA1 or BRCA2. Uh, we are able to offer them a lot more in the prevention setting. For instance, BRCA2 will be eligible for preventive medication, whereas BRCA1 may not be eligible for uh, preventive medication. Uh, these patients will also be eligible for preventive ovarian surgery. And, and similarly, for colon cancer, uh, we have uh, a, a list of germline genetic tests that we do to identify and plan precision uh, prevention strategies. So clearly a huge role in the prevention setting as well as patients who have cancer, uh, it helps us with more targeted treatment. And just to add on to uh, the affordability, um, so at M42, this test is, is readily available uh, under the Emirati Genome Program. Uh, the Emiratis have free access to this germline genetic test. And for others, it's become a lot more affordable and with a very quick turnaround time. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, we've, you've mentioned ovarian cancer and breast cancer, and I believe colon cancer. Um, are all cancers genetic or related to family history, or are there certain diseases that um, lend more to that hereditary or family history aspect? So the commonest hereditary cancers with a significant uh, genetic component uh, include breast and ovarian cancers, colon and uterine cancers, pancreas cancers, and metastatic prostate cancers. Yeah. Um, and then there are some rare cancers which also have a hereditary component, uh, but these are the ones which we see more commonly. And um, out of over 700 high-risk patients who are under our care at the moment and on prevention programs, uh, most of them fit in this category. So our focus remains on, um, on these ones, but there are other cancers, um, and if present in the family history, uh, we urge our uh, patients to come and, and uh, get a risk uh, stratification done in the high-risk clinic. Thank you. And if I, you know, say I've, you know, I do have a family history of ovarian cancer if, or have a genetic dis predisposition to developing a cancer with a mutation of some kind, I don't know, what, what happens, what should I do next? You know, if I know that about myself, you know, what, what would it look like to come to your clinic and, you know, see you and come up with some plan to prevent? Well, that's a great question. Um, typically, if there's a, either family history or a, a genetic mutation in the family, the first step would be to book an appointment in the high-risk clinic. In the high-risk clinic, our high-risk physician will do a detailed risk assessment based on the personal history, the family history, and genomic information. If genomic information is not available, we would refer the patient to our genetic counseling clinic where there is pre-test counseling available. Uh, a genetic test would be performed, and after the results, there will be post-test counseling. This will then, the patient will then be referred back to the high-risk clinic whether the test is positive for a gene or negative, based on that information, 
uh, a detailed risk assessment is performed using uh, accredited risk estimation models where available. After that, we put the patient in the right risk category, whether they are at increased risk or they are at average risk. If they're found to be at increased risk, they are then offered the comprehensive prevention programs. And these prevention programs have four key pillars. It includes enhanced screening, lifestyle advice, prevention medications, and prevention surgeries. Um, if patient is found to be at average risk, they are referred back to their primary care doctor for average population risk screening. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to touch a little bit more on those four pillars that you mentioned. Um, so maybe let's start with enhanced screening. What what innovative or new methodologies for enhanced screenings are available for patients that um, can use that as a prevention model or a tool? So when it comes to enhanced screening, the aim of enhanced screening is to detect early cancers. And depending on the disease type, we would be recommending, based on guidelines, more frequent screening. For instance, when it comes to breast enhanced screening, we would be perform performing six monthly MRIs alternating with mammogram. And this is guided by the uh, age of the affected family or the type of gene. For instance, for BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, we start MRIs as early as age of 25 oh, wow. in females. When it comes to uh, colon cancer screening, we would do more frequent screening colonoscopies. And again, depending on the type of gene, the family history, we will start and determine what age it will begin. It goes, when it goes to pancreas cancers, it would be MRI of the pancreas, uh, alternating uh, six monthly with uh, um, the MRCP of the pancreas, and it, and, and it just goes on depending on the, um, the type of the, the cancer. There has been a lot of innovation um, in, in enhanced screening as well. So uh, we, for colon cancer screening, we are already offering a biomarker test called Cologuard, uh, which is a blood test. And, um, and this helps us to um, detect early cancers. We are also the first one to uh, introduce fast MRI in the region for breast cancer enhanced screening. Um, and this was introduced last year. Um, it is a significant development because uh, as you can imagine that patients who are at high risk uh, undergo MRI of the breast every year for many, many years. And uh, fast MRI has reduced the time from 40 minutes to about 15 minutes. And it also is uh, a lot um, cheaper for patients who pay for, for it. So this is, uh, we, we feel, is a, is a huge step forward. And we are hoping in the future we'll continue to look at fast MRIs for other disease types as well. And a number of other biomarkers uh, for early cancer detection are in the pipeline. And we hope to uh, offer these to our patients once validated through research. Oh, thank you. Um, so besides enhanced screening, you mentioned three other pillars, um, preventative medication and preventative surgery and lifestyle changes. Um, let's next talk about preventative medication. How, how is that used um, in your hereditary high-risk clinic? Prevention medication are very well established in the high-risk prevention clinics over the last 15 years or so. Um, they're mainly uh, available for the breast and colon cancer prevention at present. In the breast cancer prevention, we have four different options. They are very effective. They can reduce the risk by 60%, typically offered over a five-year period and very well tolerated. And we have a number of our uh, patients at the moment who are on preventive medication and, and doing really well. Some of these medications would maintain that 50 or 60% protection or prevention 
for up to 10 years, even after completion of therapy. Again, genetics have a specifically important role to play. And based on the genetic information, we not only decide what specific medicine will be more effective, but also pharmacogenomics, which are now uh, being offered to our patients, helps to decide the dose and whether uh, it will be appropriate for our patients or not. Thank you. And I know we, we only have a few minutes left, so um, if we could also touch on the last two pillars, um, preventative surgery. How do you use preventative surgery um, in your clinic? Preventative surgery is also very well established uh, for a number of cancers. Um, again, this is guided by genetic information and the family history. So typically, when there are specific gene mutations, uh, such as high-risk genes uh, for breast cancer, BRCA1, BRCA2, and there are four others, or if there is compelling family history, we offer and counsel patients for preventive mastectomies. We have a, a team of breast surgeons who are experts in the area, and again, very well, highly trained uh, in the area who would then see our patients and counsel them on preventive surgery. When it comes to colon cancer prevention, specific gene types such as um, APC gene or a few other high-risk colon cancer genes, uh, as well as the compelling family histories, will guide uh, specific prevention surgeries. Um, these are, again, more well-established when it comes to prevention surgery. And, uh, and we have a, a team of colon cancer experts who are uh, providing the service to our patients. So we are very fortunate to have a team of multidisciplinary experts who are working together to offer these preventive treatments to our patients. Great, thank you. And last but not least, definitely um, lifestyle modifications. And it's something that I think is more well known in the, in the environment of you know, taking care of your body, living healthy, all of those things. But if you could touch on that briefly for us. So we know from several studies which have been published in the past, show that if cancer is prevented in a specific population, it only increases the lifespan by three to four years. So we know that just by cancer prevention, we haven't done the full job. We understand that the other leading causes of death, uh, which are cardiovascular disease, metabolic disease, uh, obesity, and a number of other important areas need to be managed simultaneously. And therefore, our entire team uh, of lifestyle experts, and as, as I previously mentioned, along with our nutritionists, physical therapists, psychologists, together work in managing the other areas, key areas. So we understand eating uh, the right kind of food. So we know there is evidence behind low-fat diet, in cancer prevention, we understand the highest evidence comes from regular exercise. So we have a team dedicated to uh, counsel patients on that. And then our very highly trained lifestyle physicians help uh, to manage the other comorbidities and prevention of metabolic diseases, the cardiovascular diseases, all together work to promote healthy, healthy longevity. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Um, I think it's fascinating the work you're doing and congratulate you on establishing the program and, and clinic and wish you the best of luck um, and to our audience. Um, join us next time on the next episode of The Doc Is In. Thank you.